there's about two children per minute that are being sold. That's something that you can't just ignore, that you can't just walk away from um, and live your normal life pretending that it doesn't happen. Now's the time to bring awareness so that something can be done and changes can be made. I'm Shannon Sergi. I'm the president of an organization called Forever Found. Uh, we exist to support the rescue and the restoration of children victimized by trafficking and prostitution. The way we do this is by getting artists involved, artists who are willing to donate all or a portion of the proceeds from their art, from their music, their photography, their books, whatever it may be, to the children that are victimized by this horrific evil that are sold into sex slavery, that are going through things we couldn't even imagine. Um, and the way that we help these children is by supporting um, aftercare homes that are rescuing these children. depth tonight a rare glimpse into a world both horrible and heartbreaking here is some of what NBC's Chris Hansen has uncovered in a Dateline NBC investigation poverty is no excuse for forcing children into prostitution says Gary Haugen who runs a US based human rights group international justice mission we are entering the sordid world of human trafficking this film was taken undercover in Cambodia by members of a human rights group, International Justice Mission. The girls inside this brothel were sold to the owner for as little as $100 each. Right now, um, in America, um, there's over 200,000 children that are trapped in child prostitution that are either being trafficked from overseas or American children um, in this kind of bondage, in this kind of slavery. Currently, if you average out the numbers, there's about two children per minute that are being sold. Um, right now, human trafficking is a $32 billion industry. It's tied um, with the arms industry as the second largest criminal industry in the entire world. I love the vision of Forever Found and how we are helping to support, raise support um, to help these aftercare homes rescue these girls out of basically this rape for profit. This cause is so close to my heart um, because I think children are just so beautiful. God has created such an innocence in them. And when you hear stories and see footage of men robbing these children of their innocence and involving them in this sexual exploitation, it, it, just, it just grips your heart and you can't ignore it. But you know that even with just saving one child's life, that it, it makes it worth it. The fact is that it's happening here, it's happening in America, it's happening next door, it's happening um, right underneath our noses, and for years everyone has pretended like everything's fine. Um, domestically, I'd say the average age for a child prostitute is about um, 11 to 15. Children can get taken into child prostitution by their parents getting them involved, by, by their parents selling them, by their parents being their pimp, their parents prostituting them. Um, a lot of times in America they get lured away from these pimps, so these pimps will go into places to feed upon these innocent children who can be lured away. So um, whether it's malls or near high schools, near junior highs, places where kids could get into trouble or hang out. A lot of times it'll be like a relationship type setting. So they'll find a girl who's maybe has some emotional struggles or some pains and they'll prey upon that and make them almost feel like they have this, this love for this pimp, this relationship with them. One girl um, specifically that just broke my heart to, to no end was uh, from Oregon. Basically, since she was about 10 years old, um, her, her father became her pimp. Um, he began uh, pimping her out to support his crack cocaine habit, um, and he got her hooked on crack cocaine. And so the way they supported that entire habit was by him driving her around and forcing her to sleep with men all day. The way that she got into telling me her story was by starting to tell me about this man that she missed because she was in love with him. He rescued her from her father and put her up in a motel 
and made her only sleep with him. Um, not only in this aftercare home is dealing with being raped multiple times in a day for years, but she is in love with a over 40 year old man and misses him because he's in prison and dealing with incredible withdrawals from um, one of the most addictive drugs there are. Yeah, her, her father was prostituting her out, but obviously he was able to support his drug habit and his daughter's drug habit because there was enough men that would want to purchase an 11 year old girl every day. The idea was born that we would, we would take an album and give it 100% of everything we did to it towards uh, something that we're passionate about. and. Shannon and I happen to both also be passionate about the same things, me through my friendship with Lana and um, Shannon just through just things that he, she's been passionate about and, and things she'd been doing. And one of my great friends, Lana Vasquez, is a founding member of, of one of the organizations that we support currently. And um, I've known her for 14 years. Uh, I met her before she got involved in all this and just watched her grow and, and learn how awful of a thing this is to 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 kids i heard that a child's virginity can go for as much as three thousand dollars in bangkok i heard eight-year-olds nine-year-olds being sold down to for child prostitution i heard about this eight years ago and i just heard about these little girls and I, I heard about the poverty and the situation. Some of them are sold, but some of them are tricked. And some of them in this culture, some of them think it's their duty to sacrifice their body and their life for their family. And it just broke my heart. She would be sold when she's about eight or nine. Be, they have to service about 20 men a day. At, at that young age, they have to break them in. First, they break them in for, for two years. They break in the girls. They don't, they, they make them stay in lockdown so that they don't run out and they call it seasoning and they make it basically lose their will to fight so that they don't, they can't fight anymore so that they're helpless and that's what they call, they call breaking them. They break their spirit is what it's called and so they just brainwash them. If they refuse to do anything, then they'll, they'll, they'll just beat them, they'll torture them, they, they'll laser them. They just do whatever to break their will so that they won't run away. As a female, I, I think rape is probably one of my worst fears. And to think that these kids who, who should not even have any concept of that idea are forced into it. We just, we just want people to become aware of it, to stop ignoring it, to stop putting it on the back burner because this is something that has to stop. This is a major trafficking, child trafficking point. Kids will get kidnapped, street kids will get kidnapped off the streets, they'll break a limb and then they'll make them beg in front of the local 7-Eleven in Bangkok and the parents will never see them again. Burma is right, I mean it's a stone's throw over the border and so because of that there's the poverty there, the exploitation, just the desperation, people are just flooding over these borders and so parents are selling their children left and right. 500 baht, 1,000 baht, a child, $20, $30 and they'll sell their children. It's just getting more and more desperate. The broth here, all the prostitution places, they're full of girls, 14, 15. You could go to the border and get offered a girl just like that, 14, 13, 12. I mean, they won't even blink an eye. And most of the girls here, some of them have been forced, but some of them, it's just because they're so poor, so they support their family. And that's, that's the life that they come in. They have no other choice, no other options. They don't get to be children. They don't get to play. They don't get to go to school. They have to work. And it's for an eight and nine-year-old, that's not the life that they're supposed to be leaving. They have a right to play. They have a right to go to school. They have a right to be a kid, you know, and they're, they're, it's just their childhood is taken from them at such a young age right here on the border. Not only does it just break my heart what's happening, uh, not only in America, but overseas with the victims of child trafficking and just how little is known about it. I want everyone to know about it so that we can get as much help as we can to the victims of the trafficking. It's just, it's, the details of it are, are horrible, and if there's anything that I can do, whether small or big, I want to make sure that I'm doing it. Um, if I can use the gifts and talents that God's given me to, to bring that, to make that happen, then that's what I'm going to do, and that's what I want to do. The whole reason the home started is because of the girl in the middle. We were at the cafe waiting to, for our contacts to come through to go into a factory that was exploited. Well, while we were waiting, these street kids came up to us and started asking us for money. And we didn't, I, I asked them, I said, no, we'll feed you, we won't give you money, but we'll feed you. And they said, come to my house, come to my house. And it was about one o'clock at that time. And she said, come to my house, come to my house. And so just in, in my heart, I just heard, go, go with her, go with her. And so we got everybody, we got the whole team and we loaded the kids in our car and we went to her house. And so we pulled up and we got to this place that looked, I mean, worse than any crack house. It was like, 
just basically four poles with like rice sacks hanging for walls. Holes, it was a two story and there was holes in the ground and they had little ones running around. So it was, so we pulled up to this house. I mean, it's just, we've never seen anything like this ever being in, even in Thailand. I've never seen a, even a village like this, the worst village. It was just a, just a squatter house, an abandoned house and they all live there. Well, we sit down on the ground and they, they told me in Thai, she's going at four o'clock, she's going to Bangkok. And I asked her, I said, what is she going to Bangkok for? And they said, oh, no money, no money. We have, our family has no money. And, and I said, well, you know what's going to happen to her. You know you cannot sell her. And she said, oh, no money, no money. I have too many kids. I have all these kids. I cannot support them. She goes, one daughter already in Bangkok, one daughter already in Bangkok. And she said she's, she'll go be with her sister. She'll go be with her sister in Bangkok. And so I started talking to her, and she said, the traffickers, they're, they're coming at 4 o'clock to come and get her. They're coming at 4. And I said, I started talking to her. I said, well, how much? She goes, I already paid, um, like, invested 500 baht for them to carry her to Bangkok. And I said, well, what will it be to, to, to get her back, to buy her back from the traffickers? She goes, oh, well, you'll need to give me another 500 baht, which, which 500 baht is about eight, roughly $18. And I said, okay, I'll give you the money back. Don't let her go. Don't let her go. And she said, well, and I said, what if you sell her to me? What if I buy her? And she said, well, then if you buy her, I need to add on another 300 baht, which is like roughly $10. And she, so it went from $18 to about $28, 24, 28 with the rate. So, so I told her, I said, so will you sell her to me? Will you sell her to me? So we're negotiating. In the room, everybody's screaming because everybody wants something out of it. The, the aunt screaming, I want a cell phone. I want a cell phone. The other uncle is screaming, I brought you over here, so I need money out of it. So everybody's screaming what they can get out of the, the sale for her. And so... So then, so finally I tell the mom, I'll, I'll give you that, I'll give you the money and more. And so basically she said, okay, in the end we settled at 800 baht, which is like roughly 24, $27 about that. And she said, all right, take her. We, st we came down and we got her in the truck. And as soon as she got in the truck, the traffickers pulled up to get her. And so that little girl was driving away as soon as the traffickers were pulling up. We left at almost exactly four o'clock and her life was saved just in time. There's no reason, you know, when Jesus says love your neighbor as, as yourself, I mean, I mean, how can I go through my day in my, in my warm house, you know, with, with my beautiful baby boy that I just had, you know, how can, I, how can I go through my day and through my life enjoying that when there's girls, when there's girls that are being raped and that, you know, have never had a mom love them. And, um, and so I think that, I think that the reason that I am just um, devoted to this is really because of God's love for me and the fact that I don't know what I'd be without that. And